Hiya, Jimmy here. How are you doing? Me, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. The van's not very well though. If you haven't seen me before, I'm converting that ordinary Citroen relay panel van into a camper van. And with the lockdown, it hasn't been on the road for quite a while. Um, October 19 actually. And I'm getting it ready now to put it back on the road and it needs an MOT. So I was checking it for its MOT. Now I had the engine running and it had started first time. It had been running for about 20 minutes and I was checking the lights. Now I was just getting out the van and my knee caught the key and switched the engine off. So I immediately went to start it again and there was nothing, wouldn't turn over. So yesterday I checked it over and I'll show you what I found. Right, this flat battery thing's happened a couple of times over two years, so it doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened a couple of times. Now, if you've seen my how to jump start a vehicle video, when I jump started it and, and checked the charging rate, the charging rate was 13.5 volts. And I said in the video, it should be 13.8 to 15 volts. So it was 0.3 of a volt too low. And I said it was something to keep your eye on. So we'll check that again now and um, I hope it's going to start because it's cold and I haven't started it yet. I've got the voltmeter here. I'm just going to show you this. I haven't started it yet so I'm just going to turn this voltmeter on and I'm going to show you this because 13.1 is quite a good voltage for a battery that stood overnight. Now the reason it's 13.1 is because I've just fitted a dual battery solar system and even though the van is inside it does get some charge but there we go 13.1 it's dropped 13.1 there now we try and start the engine and see what the charging rate is now can you see the charging light is on so the charging light is working and we'll try and start it. Ah, oh, only just. Now you'll notice the charging light has gone off, which should indicate that everything is working okay. But if you look, 13.3. Now yesterday when I checked it, it wasn't even that. Yesterday's clip, the one you inside the car where I started it up, you can see the van was taking the mick. That uh, 13.6, I would have just left it. It was, uh, it was it was slightly low, but it would, would have been all right. But then later on in the day, it was only 12.9. Then it went to 12.6 again. And this morning I've come in thinking that, because I'd sprayed it with WD-40, thinking it was just dirt inside the alternator. On the brushes sprayed it thought thinking it would be all right today come in today it only just started again this morning and uh it was only 12.9 again so you can see i've started to do it now i haven't filmed it up now because it's such an awful job and i've only got one pair of hands it's hard enough to do the job without holding the camera as well so i'll um actually i'll turn the camera around and uh and show you it's going to be easier than trying to hold it like this but there's the bolts and every bolt that's came out where's the, where is it there you go every bolt that's came out been like that and every bolt has been seized and i wasn't sure which way to to tackle the job either now i've done hundreds probably thousands of alternators in the past on cars and transits and things nothing like this um i'll show you in a second from underneath why it's a little bit unusual 
Uh, but I didn't know whether to try and take it out from the top or the bottom. Either way it looks as bad as the other. So I've plumbed for trying to take it out the top. So I've taken all the grill off and I've got the radiator, I've got a slam panel just tied up there. Um, because I didn't want to, I don't want to take anything, I don't want to disturb anything that I don't have to. So I've left the bonnet pole connected, I've just tied it up there. And it's all splines and torques. And uh, they're the sort of bolts that's never been off since they were new, so as I just showed you that. And now you all see it. Anyway, I'll turn the camera around. Now, you can barely see it. Um, there you can well you can hardly see it the thing with the little fins on i can't put my hand down point to it because i'm holding the camera and holding the light but that there the, the light shine on there that's the alternator you see you can barely you can barely see it and that's with part of it stripped down and underneath i've already taken the power steering belt off which is that one that's just hanging and the uh, there's the alternator there but you can see it's not enough there's not enough room for it to come through and there's no tensioners on these belts which is very unusual it's going to be a real swine to put it back on um, most alternators I've done in the past have had a tensioner so you fit the belt when it's slack and then tension it once it's on these ones have got no tensioner. I think the earlier earlier ones have got tensioners, but this model doesn't have a tensioner. So there it is. Uh, and I'll say I haven't filmed the uh, um, the job so far because it's been such a bad job. I'll uh, I'll come back once I've got the alternator out and tell you how I did it. Right, that's what I was trying to show you before. That is your alternator. Now, there's nothing to see um, to tell you whether it's um, faulty or not. It's all inside. And uh, I'm going to try and get this one reconditioned. Um, when I had the garage, I used to have somebody that used to recondition starting motors and alternators for me. But I haven't been here for quite a while, so you might not be there now. I think the I think the reconditioned new ones or reconditioned new ones, the proper it boxed reconditioned ones, um, are about 175 pounds. I think. <sighs> anyway, I'll show you how I took it out. Well, I don't know if I'm doing this the right way. You might uh, have heard a different way. I looked at it and thought it was best to come out the top. So there's. Um, Little, that type of um, screws all the way around they're not allen keys they're like, they're like splines torques and they've got little speed clips on the back of them and on quite a few of them, these ones that one at least that one and that one the speed clip broke on the back uh, now if you want to take it all the way off there's another one there and all the way along the bottom as well and um, it would have probably been easier to take it all off but uh, the more things you take off the more chance you've got of breaking things um, so the ones I couldn't get off it's, if you pull you can lever it I don't know if I'm getting that in the picture you can lever it back just enough and if you take the radiator because you take the slam panel off this is what they call a slam panel you take the slam panel off and um, there's just three bolts, um, two there and one there on each side. And then there's two bolts go through the top of the radiator mounts. They were tight as well. And then once you've got all that off and the stand panel out the way, you can lift the radiator off its mount. Um, there. I don't know if you can see that. If you lift it out of the mount and move the radiator back. And what I did then was, one, you've got a, it's still not an easy job. You maneuver it out and I've got it along here. 
towards the starter motor and then I got it out this this like hole I wish I had three hands um, well this hole here I got it out of there as I say it's the first the uh, sitting relay alternator I've done and I don't know if there's a better way or not um, I couldn't see it and the belts I've lowered the ramp down so you can't see underneath now but both the belts are hanging as well and there's no tensioners on either of them so that's going to be a great job putting that back so I'll get that alternator sent away and um, take it from there this is from, from underneath I just thought I would show you how to take the intercooler pipe off from there to the bottom there or else you wouldn't have been able to move up oh, sorry about that you wouldn't be able to move the um, the radiator back if you left that pipe on and some of you might be thinking, why did you take the uh, power steering off if you were taking it out the top? The reason for that is I like my vehicles to be uh, reliable. So while I'm on, I'm going to replace both the alternator belt and the power steering belt. Because um, it's an awful job to do and if you were away from home, it would be even worse. I forgot to say before, I... Uh, I haven't had to drain, drain any of the coolant off or anything like that. And uh, just a warning, if you're gonna do this job and you're gonna move the radiator back to uh, allow you to get the alternator out, be very careful because radiators don't take much to damage. If you catch it with a sharp edge of the alternator or screwdriver or something, you will damage your radiator and that'll be expensive. Um, so now that's it I'm gonna wait till I get the alternator back and then I'll get back to you well it's two days later and my alternator starter motor man has retired well it's not unusual really because it's 12 years since I've been in the trade and things change and talking about things changing I've bought my alternator from a pal of mine who has a non-franchised business car parts business in Newcastle and I've dealt with him for about 40 years now he's not a mechanic and he's not an auto electrician but he does know his stuff now I've bought a shiny clean new one now ready to go on but while I was chatting to him while I was there um, things have changed slightly there's uh, there's things that change the operation of an alternator now things like temperature sensors the temperature things like uh, ECU the ECU tells it when to charge when not to charge also the uh, belts without the tensioners are called stretchy belts and they're designed with a bit of give in them so you don't need a tensioner you just stretch them over when you're fitting them now that sounds easier said than done to me Right, I'm not going to film me actually fitting the alternator because it's very awkward and it would be virtually impossible to hold the camera, the light and fit the alternator at the same time. So what I'll do is I'll fit it in sections and I'll come back to you, explain what I've done, how it's went and uh, show you some pictures. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before uh, I even start is that's one of the well there's three but that's one of the alternator bolts and you can see how rusted it is so i'm going to clean the bolts up and lubricate them before i attempt to fit it i'm going to do that with all the bolts actually the bumper the grill everything i'm going to clean all the bolts because they were all well i showed you before they're all rusty so anyway i'll show you what they're like now and i'll show you what they're like when i've cleaned them cleaned bolt on the wire wheel and I'm just going to put some of my uh, lubricant on and it's the same lubricant that I used for the handbrake cable when uh, if you've seen that video when I freed off the handbrake cable this is exactly the same stuff and it's my secret 
recipe. So I can't tell you else I have to kill you. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's just copper slip high melting point grease with a touch of engine oil. And I've been using it for years and I use it for everything. I use it for door locks and everything. It works really well. So there you go. And there, that's what it should be like when you, before you put it in. I may have put a touch too much on there actually. Um, but you, you get the idea. Well, what do you know? It's on. Both the belts on. 20 minutes. I was getting ready to slate it. I was going to say what a stupid idea and uh, progress and all that. Mind you, it probably is easier to do it with the tensioners on, the, like the older, older version. But uh, what it's gone on. Now, what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and prop this up under the, um, the van and I'll try and explain and point to what I did. Um, it's definitely got a sweating like. <laughs> right, can you see the alternator there, the nice shiny new thing? Right, I'm going to put this down and try and put the light there so you can see it. And. Right, obviously you've got to put the alternator belt on first because obviously you, that's, got to, that's got to go on first. Um, so what I did was I put it over the alternator wheel first and I started it on there. <coughs> and then while I held it with one hand, I got the ratchet on and turned it in the direction of rotation, which is clockwise. And I turned it round and I, uh, I put it on. Now what was, a, the last bit was really tight. You think you're gonna damage the belt, but I didn't. But when I looked, it had come off just a couple of uh, grooves on this side. So then what I had to do was turn it round and put a screwdriver in and leave it as I was turning at the same time for it to jump over the groove. And it might sound um, quite complicated. It's, it's not as bad as it sounds. And then when I got that on there properly, it was one sort of tooth out on this side. So I'd done the same on this side. I just put this this screwdriver in and uh, into the into there like that. And I know that's I know that's the past yarn one, but I'm just showing you because it's at the front. Sort it in like that, and then leave that and pull at the same time until I got it on. Now I would advise you turn it over a couple of times by hand before you start it and make sure that it stays where it is um, and check the gap on each side of the pulley to make sure it's in the middle and check that end as well. And then this side as well, um, I was planning on going to only put one bolt in and then put it on and then swivel it around, but I thought, oh, Seeing as the other one had gone on so well, I just put all the bolts in and done the same as I did with the alternator on this side. And this one was even easier. So um, I don't know whether that was a fluke or not, but uh, I mean, it's not easy, but it's, uh, it's easier than I was expecting. Uh, now all these bolts are still loose because I didn't tighten them in case I had to take the bits again. So what I'll do is I'll tighten everything up and come back to you again just something i forgot to mention when you're fitting the alternator to the engine block get it in position first because it's quite awkward and there's three bolts now before you enter any of the bolts put all three bolts into the alternator i know you haven't entered them into the engine block but put them in because one of them you can't get in once it's tightened so i can't remember which one it is now i think it's the bottom passenger side one but I might be wrong but enter all the bolts in the alternate and then put it in position and then start screwing the uh, bolts into the engine block because it would be a shame to put them all on and then find you can't get the last one in so enter them all into the alternate before you put them in right I'm going to tighten it up now and I'm going to connect the wires on the back the wires on the back I've never mentioned yet is um there's one like a battery lead connector with a 13 mil uh, nut on it and there's a bunch connector with two wires on and it's just like a spring like a springy connector clip which you've seen before it just pushes in and clicks and tighten that up so i'll do that and then i'll come back for the next thing just going to show you a little tip i don't know how well you can see it 
the uh, bottom offside bolt of the um, alternator, you can't get an extension in. You can't get a, uh, a deep socket in because it hits on this pipe here. There's a, everything I've got won't work. So I'm going to tighten it up with this with a spanner now the only spanner I can get in is a little one like that so you put the little spanner on there like that you're not getting a lot of leverage on it so if you put another spanner over the top of it like that I don't know if can you see that um, no you can't really see can you there a little bit better um, that's the best I can do because I can't hold the light. I'll show you when I take the spanners out. You get more leverage on it. So, that's your spanner. Hook another spanner over it like that. And you get more, you get more leverage on it. It's hardly any leverage on that. Put that on. That's just a little tip. And also, I might as well show you this while I'm on the uh, the alternator wire that I was talking about there I don't know if you can see the bright that was quite dirty so as you can see I've cleaned it up because uh, if that's a bad connection you won't get any alternator output either so clean all the connections as you go along with the bolts Oh yeah, it's a couple of days later since the last clip and we've had a stinker of a problem and I just thought I would share it just in case you have this on your van. What happened was I was going to try it before I built everything back up. I was just going to try it in case we needed to go back and check anything so the slam panel, everything was, was still loose. Got inside, turned the key and it went rrr, 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 bang. And then turned it nothing on the starter motor no solenoid click no uh, i couldn't hear any clicks no clicks no noises anything all the lights were still on on the dash uh, but no starter motor now i checked it through with a voltmeter and ohmmeter and i checked all the fuses and everything i couldn't find anything i've been on it a day and a half um, <clears throat> now i found the fault today well i think i have i haven't put it right yet but i'm pretty certain it's the fault uh, it's the earth strap. Now the earth strap isn't broken and if you look at it, it looks fine. Um, and if you try the voltages with a voltmeter, everything works out. What I've had to do was, I've shorted the solenoid on the starter motor and it, and it wouldn't do anything. So I just thought for a laugh I'd put the jump leads from the engine block to the body. And it worked. And when I've checked this, earth lead up it's all intact it's not snapped but it's slightly loose if you just move it and uh that's what i think the problem is now i'll turn the camera around and show you and it's a, a sort of a problem i'll just turn the camera around and show you well i, I, I don't know how much you can see of this i can't put my hand into it because there's not enough room and the camera keeps going out of focus but if i really push hard on that I don't know, you can see it moving. Oh, I put my, my hand up, oh, you can't see anything. But that's what I think it is. Now, it's such a bad place to get to, I'm thinking about just buying a, um, a battery earth lead with two eye connectors on each end and uh, putting that on and leaving that the way it is just putting a new strap in it's going to be easier than trying to get that off i think i'll uh, i'll come back to you and I'll let you know what i eventually did right four pound fifty and ten minutes later the fault is fixed can't believe it anyway first of all i must have got excited before because i said used the wrong terminology I said I shorted the solenoid onto the start motor. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't do that. What I meant to say was I put a separate live onto the energizing wire on the, on the solenoid. I didn't short anything out. 
Um, so don't go doing that. Um, right, I'll uh, turn, the, I've, all I've done is got an, another earth strap and put it on because the other one is such a bad place and I've wasted enough time faffing on with it. So I've just put a, a new earth strap in. I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you that now. Yeah. Original earth strap is up there. I've just left it in place, um, but it's a faulty one. But what I've done is I've just replaced it by this, um, bolted into the gearbox casing there, round to the chassis, the body of the chassis. Now, same as everything with uh, electrical connectors, make sure they're clean. Scrape the paint off, clean them with and repaper. And that's that's all it is. Five minute job. Now we'll go in the cab and see if it works. Right there we go. That's twelve point seven four is the battery voltage, and I'll just tr try and start it now. All the lights are working on the dash. There you go. That's the highest it's uh, highest it's been. So the alternator is working fine. 14.3. The highest we got before was 13.6. So 14.3. There you go. That earth strap, by the way, wasn't caused by putting the alternator on. It was just coincidence. Um, I'm not even sure if it might have had some bearing on the alternator reading. Sod's law, it couldn't have happened the time before I'd done the alternator. It was the first time I went to start it after I fitted the alternator that this problem came on. And as I say, it's different end of the engine. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just bad luck. So uh, we'll box it all up together, but I think I'll do that tomorrow now. I've been here long enough. Um, but my mind's at rest now. <laughs> Uh, there's another day and a half of my life I won't get back. Right, we're nearly done. Uh, all the trims, bumpers, drip trays, everything's back on, as you can see. Uh, we're nearly finished. I'm just about to try it to make sure it's still working fine. Um, I've left the bonnet up to show you something, actually. Um, now, some of you might already know this. Uh, and I should have, uh, but I didn't. And I don't know how to jumpstart a vehicle two years ago, and nobody's told me about this. I'm just going to show you something. Now, if you want to jumpstart somebody, or you want somebody to jumpstart you, you'll probably know the battery's under the floor on a Citroen relay. But Citroen have done this pretty helpful thing. You see that? That is an earth post. You see, that says earth. That's the earth symbol. There's the earth, and if you pop that up, that is your 12 volt live, permanent live. So what you do is you put your jump, your red jump lead terminal onto there, and your black terminal onto there, and it saves you taking up the the floor. Now, Citroen normally make things hard, but in this case, there, I think that's quite helpful. And I didn't know about that till this job. And speaking of this job, that's what it looks like when all the trims and everything are back in. You can't even see the alternator. What a ridiculous design. Right, we'll just check this now, make sure it's still working okay. So we put that on the volts. That's our battery voltage there, 12.53. Now we'll just start it up. There we go. That's our charging rate. 14.3. Well, I'm not off glad that one's over. But having said that, 
I don't think the van's ever started so well. And it's the first time since I've had it, which is two and a half years now, since December 2018, that we've had a charging rate in the tolerance of 13.8 to 15 volts. So there's nothing to keep my eye on now. It's working fine. Now I was doing the editing last night and I just spotted something I said that may confuse you. Yesterday I said that I had checked the the engine earth fault with the voltmeters and ohmmeters and I was getting all the right readings. Now you're probably wondering how that was. Well because the earth strap wasn't an open circuit. Now what I mean by that is if the cable had snapped in half it would have been what they call an open circuit. This was a bad connection. So it was allowing low amounts of current to go through. But when you demanded a lot of current, i.e. starter motor, starter motor takes more current than anything else in your van or car by a mile. There's nothing comes close to what the starter takes out. So it would allow small amounts of current to pass through, but not the big amount for the starter motor now i think this problem has probably been um percolating since since i bought it since i've had the van and when i was editing last night i looked back and the clues were there off the road now over the winter to uh carry on and do some more of the build but I went to move it the other day and it's died on me. Wouldn't have it. It might not be the battery. There might be um, another, the other common causes, but there might be something else. Um, the alternator might not be charging. The drive belt might be slipped, slipping or broken. The wiring, you could have a loose lead on your battery. You could have a um, broken earth strap from your engine. You could have a um, broken earth strap from your engine. You could have a um, broken earth strap from your engine. And there's more. Um, as you've seen, my charging rate was a little bit low. It's only 0.3 of a volt. So it's not, probably not the end of the world. It's, uh, it hadn't been running very long. Um, probably when I give it a run, it'll be much better. Something to keep my eye on anyway. But there we go, 13.1, it's dropped 13.1 there. Now we try and start the engine and see what the charging rate is. Ah, oh, only just. Now I had the engine running and it had started first time. It had been running for about 20 minutes and I was checking the lights. Now I was just getting out the van and my knee caught the key and switched the engine off. So I immediately went to start it again and there was nothing wouldn't turn over and this morning I've come in thinking that because I'd sprayed it with WD-40 thinking it was just dirt inside the alternator on the brushes sprayed it thought thinking it would be all right today come in today only just started again this morning well isn't hindsight a marvelous thing so you could say it was bad luck that it uh, gave up the ghost just after I fitted the alternator but on the other hand, it could have packed in when I was in Cornwall. Would have cost a lot more. So, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, it's all working fine now, so what's next? Well, it's due an MOT, so that's next. And then you never know, I might even get a winner somewhere. And if I do, I'll take the camera and I'll bring you along. So, for now, I'll end this video now and you take care and thank you very much for sticking with it till the end. Thank you for watching.